Hi, my name is Pedro. And my name is Diego, and we're here to present computational thinking, chain reaction. It's to show our kids how it is it's to interact between the physical world and world from language using physical computing. And having fun. Too, yes. Hello. So my name is Pedro. And my name is Diego. Yes. And we are here to present you a computational thinking chain reaction. Uh, I think it's the first and so the biggest we'll see or that you have seen before. And I hope that it establish a record to be beaten on future Wolfram technology conferences. Um, so um, we used Rube Goldberg's uh, idea about coming up with a very complex or indirect way of triggering a workflow to ex execute a very simple task. So that is indeed the purpose. Uh, but well, the motivation is a little bit more uh, fundamental. Is that, um, well, we learn with experience. And uh, um, Wolfram language is an extraordinary language to, to experiment with the real world, to do computations directly with the real world. But uh, well, communication protocols sometimes are daunting. Uh, and Mathematica offers a lot of them. And in some way, we'll use this presentation to um, focus on the different ways you have to communicate between the different technologies uh, available. The most important thing is, I think Mathematica is a, sorry, the Wolfram language is a great tool for kids to start experimenting with physical computing at the world. So. Yes. So what we're going to start is a, a chain reaction. We're going to start with uh, using an old phone and use a, setting it up as an IP camera to capture a live stream. We will take that image. We'll look for an image of an animal using web you must search. Let's use the network from image identify to figure out what it is. We will use the new Wolfram channel framework to communicate between one computer to a Raspberry Pi. We have the Raspberry Pi send uh, an inquiry to the Wolfram Cloud to get us to send us that what that animal is uh, through MSS, SMS, through a Wolfram send message. On my Android phone, I got Tasker, which will then post the data into Wolfram Drop. We will get that data from Wolfram Drop, uh, search on Wolfram Alpha for the scientific name of the animal, then use the Zigbee communications method to send the data to Arduino, and then we'll just, as a tribute to Morse, send it on Morse code for you all to see. Nothing can go wrong, yes? Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really, well, basic stuff. So what we have here, it's, well, it's when, when Diego said it's an old phone, yeah, well, it's a Windows phone, yes? Yes. So, so let's push thing. the bar a little bit higher, yes? <laughs> let's make this thing work. So what you have here, it's a standard IP camera software. Um, you can add it in, uh, well, iPhone, iPad, uh, Android phones. We have a lot of apps for that thing. And what it does is that it, it starts transmitting a streaming of images. Um, and um, so one small detail here is that, of course, for all, all of this to work, um, all of this has to be uh, routed into the same um, uh, network. In this, in, in, in what I mean is that we have there a, a small router that you can see on top, on top of this table that is actually uh, where all the devices are being connected because, of course, trying to connect this through the well, conference center network would be a little bit too, too, too daunting for us. Um, and so, um, so... Yeah, so let's try and find a cat, an image. And if everything goes okay, okay, first step is, is working. We hope. It is gathering images of cats, okay. Why a cat? Well, why not a cat? Yes, it's the internet that we are searching for, so yeah. obviously it's a cat. Has to be. All right, so 
what we're going to do is capture yeah. the image of a cat. And so for that, we are using a little piece of code uh, um, developed by Arnold, uh, a little bit uh, Arnold that is in the room, a little bit adapted uh, because we are uh, sending a, a stream uh, of uh, MGPEG uh, through the IP camera. And what this means is that, uh, well, we actually can transmit from an IP camera directly to Mathematica in a pretty nice way, yeah? And so we are on second step now. <laughs> uh, you don't believe it, so let's, let's try to have Anton, Anton for, oh sorry, Anton for posterity. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so what we are now going to do is that uh, we are going to the previous slide and point it to the cat. Yes, let's try to have here a beautiful image of, of, the, um, of the cat. And we are going to remove the task that is constantly updating the streaming. And that's it. So we are on, uh, I think, 20% done. <sighs> and it's going OK. So we have this image uh, that was captured. And we are going to try to identify it. And please, yes? Let's see. Let's get to at least 50%, yes? <clears throat> And so, uh, oh, yes. It is a domestic cat. Yes. I think at this moment we have the world record. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, to make it a little bit easier to transmit between all those co technologies, we are using a string and not an entity. Uh, but that's just for convenience. Because, well, at a given moment, we are going to send an SMS. Yeah? So, well, now, um, go Be ahead. Before we send it, so one of the things that we did is there is a new experimental technology called channel framework, which makes it extremely easy to pass information along from one Mathematica instance to another. So my friend Pedro has set up a Raspberry Pi over there. Do you want to show it? Sure. Uh, through the screen. I think we are uh, already transmitting. And so we need to make sure that we have it set up. and. Yeah, sorry, you meant to pass it through yeah, here. Yeah. Yes, okay. So the, what we are seeing here at the screen, it's, it's uh, the Raspberry Pi screen. Uh, it doesn't actually exist physically on the Raspberry Pi. It's, it's headless in some way. Uh, but we are accessing it through a VNC. And we already have uh, loaded um, Mathematica, just because Raspberry Pi is a little bit slow. And so just to make sure that we would get to the 50%. Um, and so we already have here a notebook opened. And the first thing that we are uh, going to do is to actually cloud connect. I already did it, just in case that it would break here. And so we are sure that, well, Raspberry Pi is indeed connected to the network and everything yeah. is working. And what we are going to create here is a, a listener uh, for the channel that is called uh, uh, Wolfram Technology Conference 2018. And um, I think we're now ready to send a message, right? Yeah, we are ready to send a message, yes. No. Yes, it was just to make sure that it connected. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you could indeed go to the menus and, and, and ask to connect to the cloud, etc. But on, on the Raspberry Pi, it's the easiest thing to do is to use the, the command. And so here we send the animal name. That's the variable animal. But well, you do remember what is the name. It's a, it's a domestic cat. It was cat. a domestic cat. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Let, let's, let's just send it. And uh, did it appear on the, hmm, well, we do count here. One message, it's a very small, it's a very small number, but let's see if it got, yes, it oh, got it. went yes, through. It got it. So we are probably at 40%. Yes. yes. So already hard to beat in 2019. Um, and so what are we going to do now? Well, now we are going to call an API function that was preloaded into the Wolfram class that is prepared to send uh, that extremely important information uh, through SMS to, uh, well, let's say modern mobile phone. And so, oh, well, let's try to do it. It's a big camera. Yeah, so uh, let's see if it indeed got. Got Raspberry Pi, image capture. Let's go for it. 
Send it again. Can you send it again? Yes. So I can show the. Uh, okay. The so let, let we can send a, uh, a new a new SMS, um, and 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 go very quickly from one to the other one. There you go. So okay. It, it came through. So so yeah. So we did send the domestic cat string into an API function in the cloud that in itself send us SMS through the phone and within the phone, yes. So within the phone, uh, using Android, what, you got many possibilities. So we just picked the most complicated one because if not, it wouldn't be a root cause. You got the yes. IFTTT, which makes it very simple. Uh, Wolfram Technologies does have a plugin to send it to the dashboard drop, but that would be making it easier. So we just went for the complicated route using task. So you will see in the documentation basically what it will do. There is a task over there. It gets an SMS. It checks that it's from well, from Cloud. And then what it will do is basically do a posting into the, a database. And so we do suspect that it is already in the data bin. That, uh, Incredibly important message. So let's check. So let's um, define a bin as being the data bin that was preset. That is, Wolfram Tech Technology Conference 2018. And let's get the latest information that went into it. It's a cat. <laughs> and so thank you. <laughs> so mm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now let's try to get extra information on what is a domestic cat. So we do contact Wolfram Alpha to have the information from it. And of, well, what we would like really to have. So the purpose of all this was actually to have the scientific name of the animal that we st streamed, video streamed on, on, on that particular strange phone. Um, and so we do have already the scientific name. Um, and now we are going to the hardest part. All right, so we already have the message that we want to transmit through the airwaves. And what we have here is a little box that you will see the breakdown on the screen. It's got a little radio in there. The other radio is connected to the computer. And we wrote a little function that would uh, translate the message into Morse code. So these are just functions that allows us to transmit this information. I'm going to go to the end of the room, so yeah. see that there's nothing. <laughs> so we just connected the device, attention, <clears throat> because this are, is going to be last phase. Let's see if you can really read the, the scientific time. Come on. I'm not going to do what? Ah, okay. He doesn't believe me, so why don't we send it again? Yes. So let's send it again, and let's actually do an image capture at the same time. And, and, and Anton is going to kind of prove that it is being transmitted. Let me just try to. Yes. Yeah, he's holding the cat by its tail. Is, is he moving? No. Is he moving? No. So, yeah. it, like this? It yes. Is, yeah. Let me. Yeah. Okay, and we can, we can, we can. Well, he didn't watch. see it, so turn it around and <laughs> Okay, good. Okay. And so, yes, go ahead, please. Yes, yes. Well, yes, the, the cloud is actually, is actually because we are using the API function from, from the Wolfram Cloud, and so I had to connect the Raspberry to the Wolfram Cloud. That's uh, one, and the channel, net, the channel framework is under uh, Pedro's ID. So to be able to open it, there has to be a user involved. And with the, uh, with the um, Raspberry Pi, sometimes we would load it and there would be no user associated. So we just made sure that uh, yeah. that it's in. Uh, 
That's uh, beyond, beyond my pay grade. I, I think. Uh, I'll, I would say that as long as you have a broker of yourself yet, that is, uh, if you are going through Wolfram Technologies, you have to pass through the Wolfram Cloud, but you can actually have uh, some, um, let's say, server listening to your messages and distributing your messages locally. And that is completely doable, yes. Yes. Yes, and you, you even have, well, Wolfram even has uh, MQTT protocol, although on a very alpha base, but it actually works. I have tried it before. And so, yes, you can actually create a, a, a small server just to receive and distribute message within your local system. We've got a couple more goodies to show. Yeah. That, uh, that we wanted to um, yeah, share but, with yeah, you. But, but go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it's just because it's a Windows phone. Oh. And do you have anything against it? <laughs> no, I don't. Well, for example, I know. Not at no, all. No, no, not no. at all. Just downloaded an application it was from the web. Really, just yeah. to make it harder. Okay. <laughs> and so, well, well, it has to be said, yes. And so the purpose was pushing the envelope of internet cat image computational thinking, yes, because that's one of the main purpose of the internet. So, um, yeah, we left some code here for you to, uh, if you want to see it, it's gonna be available. Yes. And so, well, coming back to uh, some basics, because we do still have some, some minutes. Uh, and so, um, what have we used? Well, we have used, uh, or we are still going to use in this demonstration, um, an ESP8266, that's a microcontroller. It's very similar to the uh, Arduino that we have used inside that box that has the, has the LEDs. Uh, and so that's not really a computer, it's a microcontroller, it doesn't have an operation system. It just runs uh, again and again and again the same instructions. Um, and we have used uh, res uh, Raspberry Pi uh, that where actually Mathematica was running. Uh, with these devices, we can do a lot of interesting things. Diego is here demonstrating something that should be impossible, but it's actually quite, so quite simple. And so, just for the people that are not in the room, um, let's see if we can capture. So that's an ESP8266. Uh, it is just connected to a battery bank, uh, just for convenience. It could be just connected to a, any kind of battery, yes. Uh, but like that we avoid um, cables and it's quite secure. And what we have here is a moisture central, uh, uh, soil moisture sensor yep. uh, that we would eventually use to know when, well, when your plants are needing water. Um, and so why this would be possible to do actually? Yeah, so looking at the documentation, there is no UDP uh, channel to use within uh, Mathematica, but What's the problem? We got a, uh, an external evaluator, so let's see. The code is in Python, why not? Copy shamelessly. So we uh, went to Python, created a Python program. Just, just for the reference, this Python code, a code, it's actually within the notebook. So if you download the notebook, you have it as a, a bit array uh, stream inside the notebook so that you can save it back to a file if you want. So just for testing, we're gonna Send it read. So let's go ahead and try something out. Let's see how humid I am. And so we can actually transmit information even with channels that Mathematica doesn't necessarily support from the start because, well, we have external evaluation with Python, we have external evaluation with JavaScript. And you don't believe it, so you don't believe it, so touch. No, you have oh, to. come on. <laughs> Is it good? Do you I believe it or not? Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, 
let's just kill the dynamics so that to make sure that yeah yes just yes, pick you could. one you because could. why not yes you, we will wait for your talk next year for sure it will be very interesting <laughs> And so just to finish, because we still have a couple of minutes to go, uh, we have a different one here. Uh, so this one, it's again using uh, ESP8266 as a microcontroller, but we are going uh, to send uh, the information coming from uh, a temperature and humidity probe uh, to Wolfram technology. Um, directly uh, from the... Yeah, from directly the from the ESP8266. Um, with a post uh, uh, on the data on the data bin infrastructures, and so um, well, it has been actually it has been transmitting from the beginning of of this talk because we just plugged it, and it should be working fine. And so what we are going to see is how hot this. Oh come on, the last one. And it didn't. There you go. Uh, there yeah, you go. there, you, there go. you go. So. Thank you. So let's see. Now, come here. Now yes. you can now, now you can use your breath because it's got a humidity sensor. So go at it. <laughs> come on, keep keep at it. It's every fifteen seconds. Yes, it's every fifteen seconds. It's every fifteen seconds. So I think that where we are going to see a difference is in humidity. Generally, humidity jumps to one hundred percent. Uh, not yet, not and yet, no, no. not yet. It doesn't want to refresh. Well, well, we'll I'm try sorry and for don't. that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have the schedule task running, and for some reason, it doesn't oh, want. Maybe he's dead. Oh, okay. It there just moved, and it went up. Immediately didn't into it as up as we would expect, but it is indeed updating because the graphic just updated a few more seconds. And that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you.